Hi, everyone. How are you? Welcome to our live event. I'm here with Hims. Hi, Hims. How are you? Hello, uh, Jessica. Nice to meet you today. Nice to see you. Um, okay, so we'll do like a proper intro of Hims in a second, in a few minutes. I just want to, um, to talk a little bit about the live event and a little bit about University of the People, give people some time to uh, join the event. So hold tight, Hims. We'll be with you in a minute. Um, OK, so I'm Jessica. I'm the social media and community manager at University of the People. It's always a pleasure to be here with you guys and bring you stories, student stories. Today, we're going to focus on life after graduation. I think it's really important for our students and our applicants to to see that there is life after graduation. So that's why Hims is here. He's going to talk about what he's been up to since graduation. Uh, like I said, we'll be there in a minute. Just let our viewers uh, sign on. Um, so thank you, everyone, for being here today. I really appreciate it. Feel free to, uh, to ask questions in the comments, and I will be sure to respond to them. If I don't respond during the live event, I will review and respond after, not to worry. Um, but hi, guys. So thanks so much for tuning in. Um, why don't our students let us know what you're studying and our applicants let us know uh, what you're, uh, where you're from so we can differentiate. Um, we are very close to the early admissions deadline, which is Thursday, October 1st. Um, so don't forget to save your spot. If you haven't done so already, all you have to do is copy the link in the description of this event and paste it into your browser. Um, and I want to remind everyone that we know that, you know, there's a lot going on with coronavirus, but nothing has changed at University of the People. We are exactly the same um, because we have cutting edge technology and we've been around for 10 years and we are the experts in the field. So. I am going to talk about life after graduation. So um, University of the People, the courses are geared towards employability. Our focus is to provide students with the skills that they need to get a job in their field after graduation. And we even offer a career service center. Did you guys know that we offered a career service center? I don't know if you did. But if you didn't, let me just talk to you a little bit about it. Um, so we, the Career Service Center provides uh, industry and career information so you can explore different career paths based on your major or the degree you're seeking. Uh, they also offer resume and cover letter writing uh, like workshops, um, interviewing skills, they teach you interviewing skills, um, job internship listing websites, you'll have access to that, and career development courses. Many of our students have gone on to do amazing things, um, like him. We're gonna go go into that in a minute. Uh, but you know, some of the companies that our uh, students have gone on to work for: Amazon, Microsoft, Dell, Deloitte. Um, some students have even started their own business, um, or some have gone on to complete their own degree. So, so much to do at universe after life at University of the People. So Hims is in a computer science major. So hi, Hims, how are you? Hi, Jessica. So Hims, let's bring it to you. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm a Hong Kong girl. So um, the city it is based on the southern coast of, of China. And uh, uh, I originally enrolled in the business administration degree, but I switched the major into computer science uh, on my second year, as I have found that computer science is very um, specialized and very useful tool to let me can pursue a more challenging position. So that's why I made this, such a decision. Uh, when I was enrolled in a uh, bachelor's. Um, I was a journalist and an editor, uh, and uh, it is uh, one of my, um, this is the career that I was decided to pursue after I completed my first degree. 
Okay, wow. So you have, okay, so I want to talk about a few things. First of all, I couldn't place your accent when you were speaking in English, but now that you mentioned that you studied in, you studied, you actually studied in Australia. Okay, now I understand. So you do have, you do speak English with an Australian accent, which is super cool. I would do anything to speak with an accent that wasn't American. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I find my accent really boring and I'm from Chicago, so shout out to any chicagoans um by the way is anyone else here from hong kong let us know in the comments i'd love to know who of our students are from um hong kong i think that's super cool okay so you were a journalist and an editor and you went to one of the top university australian universities um this is very interesting information how did you uh switch to Compute. Why did you decide to switch to computer science? Um, so um, during my um, very first job, um, I was assigned to uh, reporting some IT related uh, news or stories so that uh, I get started to um, have to understand uh, what IT uh, um, equipment or what kind of system is now, um, the world is now demanding right now. So uh, when I was heard about like big data, it was in 2014. Uh, um, I know uh, when I was get, just getting the job, I had a lot of new terms that I actually I never studied uh, or even heard about it during in the campus. Um, so, uh, which makes me, uh, have an incentive to know more about uh, what the data science is about. So, uh, makes me uh, thought to uh, study in an IT degree in order to um, getting more understanding reporting such news like this. Okay, very interesting. So that's kind of why, so what in general, why did you uh, decide to pursue higher education? Maybe you could speak on like a broader level. Um, I decided not to pursue a master's at that time That's because um, the tuition fees for um, studying a master's degree is uh, very highly competitive in Hong Kong and the cost is pretty high as well. So uh, it may covers about uh, a year of my salary, so it won't be a very wise choice uh, in order to do uh, a postgraduate degree. And uh, I was having some research on the online education because I had uh, experiences on learning from a book, uh, the MOOC, the Massive uh, Open Online Courses. Um, but then I feel like uh, the course is not too structured. And, uh, so I still have to think about um, how, what kind of college would suit me best uh, by online education. Um, so eventually I um, learned about your people uh, from some social media posts and then uh, I consider to applaud it uh, in four years ago. So that's how my journey started. Okay, very nice. And well, I'm so happy you found University of the People. Um, and what maybe you could talk about some of the challenges that you've um, that you've had in in getting a higher education, like maybe like student debt or flexibility. Hmm. Sure. Um, so. I would say, uh, as I have previously mentioned, um, sometimes if we have to cover a higher cost in uh, the higher education, uh, it is unavoidable for us to borrow the loans. Um, so it definitely is one of the barriers that uh, most students start to stay away from further studies. And, uh, and we also, we afraid or having a fear in the, uh, on completion for the course because uh, 
we have a job and uh, we also have to care about our family and also uh, spending some time on our uh, interests so which makes us uh, hard to balance the life on studies so uh, and uh, sometimes uh, if we uh, encounter some subjects or uh, we do uh, meet some uh, lecturers or tutors that not that nicely not that friendly so it might discourage me to continue my studies uh, so that's uh, one of so these are the challenges that I can think about I could tell everyone okay I didn't realize it was such a competitive uh that higher education was so competitive in Hong Kong. It's very interesting. I wonder, I wonder why that is. Is that because they're they're competing to be the top of the class, or what? What is the situation? Um, so uh, it is not really a big matter. The matter you get the first honors, second honors uh, about uh, the job opportunities. Um, I have to declare that. Uh, the types of job provided in Hong Kong's employment market is quite limited. And uh, so that is why um, the competition is that high. And uh, we are also living in a multinational uh, workplace environment. So that means uh, not just locals will do IT, um, we, we have specialists from China, uh, from India or from Japan or from different places. So, uh, which makes us a very undesirable um, environment at all. Um, so that's uh, one of the biggest challenges that most graduates will um, facing in today's um, job market in my city. Okay, I understand. Very interesting information. Um, okay, let's shift it a little bit. To talk about your experience at University of the People. Maybe you can talk a little bit about what it was like to study at University of the People, um, course instructors, your experience with course instructors, or others and other students you've met. Well, I had a enjoyable moments during my studies, uh, especially at the moment that I completed the final exam and I checked my preliminary grade, which is an eighth grade. So in this college, uh, which is quite, um, I would say the first year's course are pretty encouraging to students study because um, the tutors uh, utterly welcome you and uh, many students uh, are different from different countries so uh, for each week in the discussion forum we have um, more than 100 students <laughs> on discussing on the same topic so you get lots of resources as long as you are ready and get prepared yourself to engage the subject and uh, it, and because of such an environment um, i would feel like um, no longer a loser as yeah. I feel like in my uh, life you are as a not student. A loser. Yes. Uh, not yet already. Yeah. Uh, maybe I was a loser. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Yeah. But it's interesting that that, that 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 the the sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but that's interesting that the environment in Hong the higher education and environment uh, the higher education environment in Hong Kong does make you feel like less than. That's no fun. Who wants to feel less than? You're doing great. Okay, moving along, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thanks Jessica for <laughs> saying so. Uh, I'd like to say, uh, including the staff and uh, instructor students, are they are so smart and they're willing to share during the course. And uh, I have to, admit that most of their students uh, they're joining this bachelor's program do, they do have certain years of experiences and uh, they are not 
so many uh, career changers just like me. So um, if you are able to get into this environment, just don't feel shame to ask because uh, they're all Superman. <laughs> you just need to raise your concerns and they will surely come for help to um, help you in the course. I love that you just compared the course instructors to Superman. That's to Superman. That's really cute. I, I like the analogy, but that's great. So you had a very positive experience. It sounds like. Um, and as far as University of the People, it uh, we know that University of the People is one hundred percent online. How did that flexibility help you in your studies? Um, so despite in uh, such a critical situation under coronavirus, um, so uh, for all the subjects, uh, it is provided in online, so which means that uh, you don't have to worry about uh, will you need to arrive to somewhere and taking some uh, practical units. You don't have to do so. Uh, and you just need to hop into the um, portal. You just need to uh, focus on reading tasks and assignments that's di distributed on the week. And uh, so that's all. It won't spend you about uh, maybe about six to eight hours for each subject, of my personal experiences. So um, it saves you a lot of time from learning online. You don't have to take in uh, your time on transportation. You just need to do it when once you can connect it to the internet. And uh, another flexibility I have to mention in the course is uh, there are a wide range of electives. I recall that there are about, uh, I cannot recall the exact number, but it's about like, um, like 30 to 15 electives that is actually provided aside from your major course. So uh, it varies from um, Asian art history uh, to environmental science, uh, psychology, and um, business. So it depends on your uh, interests and um, what kind of Great, do you want to get? <laughs> because uh, I have to admit some courses you can complete easily and some you have to spend extra time. Okay. Those are the foundations courses. Yes, that's right, yeah. the foundational so, courses. The foundations courses for those who don't know are courses that you're initially required to take before starting your actual degree. It's kind of like an intro to online learning, I would say. Um, but interesting courses that you took, and you got to choose those courses, right? Mm, yeah, so um, there's a lot of courses, aside from your major, can choose. Um, it depends on uh, how many uh, credits left. And I have to mention um, about my past experiences about um, I had been staying in uh, the country Vietnam for about uh, six months in the first half of this year. So, uh, so this gives me the possibility that no matter where I am, so I, I was not in Hong Kong, I was not in America, not in elsewhere, but I still can uh, okay. finish up my course. Um, uh, as, even though uh, sometimes I couldn't access to the internet very well in that country, but uh, I can still find somewhere to finish that, like a coffee shop or a restaurant, to sit in and you yeah, can you just- can study anywhere, anytime, right? <laughs> yeah, you can complete your task like uh, in an hour or two. Yeah, so as long as the place allow you to sit in, then I will make use of the time and complete the task. Okay. That's Okay, so great. So what? So sounds like the flexibility really worked out for you. Let's shift it a bit and talk about your career. Um, can you please talk about some highlights from your career path? Sure. 
Um, as I have mentioned about, I was a journalist and editor at that time. Uh, so I decided to um, switch my career um, about um, in uh, two years ago. So at that time, I was focusing on uh, looking for some jobs combining technology and media. And uh, fortunately, I have found some jobs uh, which is uh, like an, uh, like marketing uh, researcher, so which is a very good combination that uh, lead to applying some uh, data. Uh, so um, so we have to apply some. Uh, what we say uh, we need to apply some data structures knowledge in order to construct some. Uh, QEs on the SQL, yeah. So after that, we can sort out some of the useful uh, insights for our clients. Uh, also, uh, we also need to do some um, how can we say um, crawling, some web crawling as well. Um, so web crawling, you can understand, is like when you go into a website, uh, but there's a lot of items, so how can you extract the most important information? From it? So uh, you may define certain keywords, and they will, the system will help you to um, sort out uh, the resources or data according to your um, command or conditions. So uh, this is also a very useful technique that I earned from this university and did apply for my work. Okay, so so how did University of the People help you in your career path? Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, sure. Uh, so uh, it allows me uh, to enter into jobs that actually did require some of the technologists. So uh, I cannot say uh, it is uh, impossible for completing the degree and then you switch into a programmer or a program uh, or a project manager. I cannot say this is important, uh, impossible, but uh, it may be still a long way to go. Uh, you still need to having some more practical or technical experiences. So uh, I would like to say, uh, like digital marketing is one of the best options for many uh, non-programming or those students who have no um, uh, pre-knowledge on IT. So uh, I would say uh, I choose to uh, having uh, such a digital marketing job first, and then I switch into um, current job as an analyst in a real consultancy firm. Okay, very nice. So, okay, let's talk about what you've been up to since graduation. I'm sure we're all dying to know. What have you been up to since you graduated? Oh, right. <laughs> that's, a <laughs> lot to, that's a lot to talk because uh, um, just under some circumstances, um, I stayed in Vietnam uh, as a volunteer teacher, uh, even though it's not um, very relevant to the studies. Uh, but uh, the uh, knowledge that I earned from the fundamental course is really helpful in order to uh, instruct the students to uh, name some of the uh, items according to the subject. So uh, today we having some course related to economics. Um, so that is really helpful for me to uh, introduce uh, some uh, expressions on business English in the in the daily uh, courses. Um, so it makes me it soothes uh, the difficult times when I just get into the school for teaching. And then uh, I'm still very open 
to any sort of uh, freelance tech jobs in order to maintain the students in the current. Okay, so you're volunteering as a teacher and you're looking for um, freelance jobs. Yes, you can say it like this, aside from my job right now. Okay, very nice. So you're very busy. You too. Uh, <laughs> I, really um, enjoy, I'd, I'd really enjoyed the life after the graduation because, um, because of this degree and skills I've learned, I can reach out to many people, regardless they're from Hong Kong or from China and also from parts of the world. That's so cool. I really appreciate you saying that. And my final question for you, Hims, is what special advice would you give to a person interested in a career in your field? Um, so my special advice is please do more searching on LinkedIn. Please check your LinkedIn. If not that you have no LinkedIn account, please create one and uh, you should take a look on uh, the graduates of your people from the site. And uh, as besides you decided to invest your time and, uh, into this degree, even though it is free intervention, uh, but you have, must have an idea um, that what do most graduates become after their bachelor's life uh, in order to make your imagination of university to be more realistic. And uh, last but not least, uh, don't forget uh, to manage your time well because uh, we need um, certain kind of uh, regulations for ourselves. So because there's no, um, um, so we need to set our timelines very carefully. So um, because in the real world, there will be no one, uh, just like your colleagues or your friends, they will urge you to study or go into complete the task. So you all of the tasks, you have to set your own timeline. Everything must be handled by yourself and managed by yourself. So that is my advice for this. Okay, very nice advice. And I want to go back to LinkedIn for a second. Um, now, how do you use LinkedIn? Are you are you searching for for um, are you searching for uh, jobs? Are you searching for like to see what other people are doing and as far as building their you know their professional experience? Like, can you just go back to LinkedIn for a second and tell us what you're using LinkedIn for exactly? Okay, um, so uh, as I mentioned before, LinkedIn. It platform that it is good for networking for jobs and uh, also you can check into the other profiles of some uh, candidates that is actively seeking jobs so what you would expect using this platform is when you are uncertain what kind of skills or what degrees do you need or preparing for the future. Say, if you want to become a, a UI UX uh, designer, so you better uh, search UI UX designer on the search bar. And surely there is a large, a bunch of name lists uh, showing it. Just click into one of them and you may realize that uh, what are their education is and what kind of past experience and projects they have been participated. And so based on that, you will need to seek about where's your entry point based on the other's experiences. After that, um, you can try to plan on your study, uh, getting certain level of uh, knowledge, and you may try to apply a similar job just as what the LinkedIn people do that i have to tell you i think is one of the best pieces of advice a graduate has given and now i'm thinking we should i don't know 
it would be cool to do a live event. Let me know, guys, the viewers, and in, in the comments if you'd be interested in learning more about LinkedIn. Um, maybe as a live event, as you know, getting more advice because that is really good advice, Hims. Thank you for sharing. I really appreciate it. You even got my mind going a bit. I think it's interesting to see what other people in your field are doing. It gives you ideas on what you can be doing better or differently so thank you so much for sharing that i really appreciate it yeah and uh do you mind us adding one more point to yes, linkedin yeah so uh don't be shy to dress up your linkedin profile because uh it's not just for your friends seeing that i will say if your profile is really um it's well written and uh, uh, you got some special skills, just don't feel shy to um, show them off. And surely there will be some recruiters or even some um, uh, C level will actually will find you. So that is my past experience. Like uh, when I was uh, teaching in Vietnam, uh, I did show that uh, I have some um, experiences on teaching English. So very soon they will get reach of me and uh, they may asking me if do I actively seeking for a teaching role or something. Yeah, but uh, of course I have uh, already made up my mind to become an analyst in the real estate field because that is my interest right now. So, um, so I hope all of you can uh, try to make use of this platform, get yourself more prepared, and let you shine in the LinkedIn site. So uh, make sure you will be more likely to success, be get into a job that you never expected to do. Wow, okay, him, that, that is just great advice. I'm. I've never really talked about LinkedIn on a live event before. I'm like a little excited about this LinkedIn talk. Um, but aside from the LinkedIn talk, you uh, you had a lot of great things to say, a lot of great points. Um, congratulations on completing your degree, University of the People. And thank you so much for being here today. Do you have any final thoughts? Okay, um, so my final thoughts to or um, people who intend to get into the degree. So um, I would say that this is a very good starting point to equip your um, uh, equip yourself, no matter uh, in your critical thinking and also your knowledge. And uh, I admit that many students, they are from English speaking countries. So, um, some of them uh, just asking me about uh, do I uh, have enough English level? Do I reach the minimum level that I can study in this online university? And uh, I would say, uh, why not go for it? Because now this is your chance. Um, as you may know, um, University of the People um, is actually welcome everyone to go and it's still tuition free okay so you don't have to pay for your um, textbooks you don't have to pay for the course materials or whatsoever so um, and the school is getting more reputation uh, just because we have a more uh, higher uh, um, we we'll say we have a lot of um, high quality of graduates, no matter it's from the bachelor's degree or from the MBA as well. So um, it is no matter will you plan to get this degree or not, you should think about, uh, you should take the insights from some well experienced guys. So in your people, you will see a lot in here so if you want to challenge or want to make a change in your life that is a really a good shot 
to enroll in this university. Okay, thank you so much, Hems. You have been phenomenal. I'm like blown away by everything you said. Thank you so much for sharing everything with us and good luck on your next chapter. Um, so guys, thank you so much uh, to our viewers. Don't forget that the early admissions deadline is this Thursday, October 1st. And I wish everyone, if you're a student, good luck with the term. If you're an applicant, good luck with the application process. Um, if you have any questions, you can always email admissions at UO People. If you're a student, you can always email your advisor. Um, I did include the link to the application uh, in this uh, in the description of this event, so you just have to copy and paste it into your browser. And thank you so much for everyone for tuning in. And special thanks to Hims for taking the time out of your day. I know it's uh, 10 o'clock, or uh, now it's almost 10.40 uh, p.m. Mm. in Hong Kong. So you're a real mm. trooper for doing a live event late at night. So thank you so much, Hims, again. I really appreciate it. And thank you. <laughs> um, thank you, Jessica. Thank you for giving me such a chance to um, share my happiness and delight after the graduation. Um, so uh, don't, uh, besides the uh, website, so I would suggest every student considering um, to enroll in this university, subscribe and look into uh, uh, the YouTube and the Facebook. So there's a wide range of successful cases after studying the degree. So their, their life are actually becomes getting more better. And some do actually migrate to other countries and make good businesses. So I'm also um, uh, eager to starting my own educational business with my oh, IT cool. Yeah. That's so, exciting. Yeah, so hopefully uh, my personal experiences and uh, would help uh, to make you to make this decision. So uh, I'd like to hear more from you in no matter uh, after this call or somewhere in reality. Yeah. So I feel welcome to answer your questions related to this university. Okay. Amazing. Thank you so much, Hems. I really appreciate it. And everyone have a beautiful day, a beautiful night, wherever you are. Stay safe and healthy and connected with you all people by your side. Oh, and uh, I was so into the conversation. I forgot tomorrow we have another live event at 10 a.m. Eastern time with Hajar. And Hajar is from Morocco, and she's, she's uh, 21 years old, and she was having some difficulties with documents and going – finding a university that would accept her in Morocco. And then she found University of the People. So she's going to talk about how that's helped her. So she's very young and energetic, and I think it'll be a great live event. So I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Facebook and YouTube. Okay, I think that's all we got for today. Thanks, Hims. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. See ya. <laughs>